Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. This is Professor Onuk Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are in continuation of the 6th week lectures. This is uh, in that sequence the 29th. In the last class uh, we are already introduced with uh, the derivation of strain. Uh, more popularly that is the terminology used derivation of strain, but actually that is uh, also known in, in the words like uh, strain displacement uh, relation. So, with respect to displacement how strain is defined uh, that we have done, we have done considering a mathematical approach not uh, considering a visual approach uh, like many other books uh, have presented may be considering two dimensional then going to three dimensional. What we have done we have considered uh, a th vector approach or uh, better to say tensor approach and then using the tensorial notations uh, tensor calculus we have found out uh, the expression for strain. Uh, in that process uh, it is uh, good that we have got uh, the expression including the higher order terms that is the nonlinear part of the strain displacement relation. Uh, nonlinear part of the strain displacement relation is uh, in general uh, not required probably for discussion uh, of the stage you are going through. But uh, it is better always to get introduced uh, with the nonlinear part also, because uh, we should not keep in mind that all relations of strain and displacement are always linear. There are cases for large deflection, especially we need to consider the nonlinear part. So, in those cases uh, where we need uh, we need to consider, but the discussions on theory of elasticity or the type of problem what we generally solve in this stage of study, study is uh, concerning about linear part of strain. So, uh, with that uh, definition of linear part of strain which is if the i j is equals to half of uh, del u comma i del j ok we will come to that better before that uh, we, we, we go into the recapitulation side slide this helps uh, a lot about what we have already covered in the course. We have covered history of uh, aircraft as well as uh, solid mechanics or uh, structural analysis all these things what we are uh, covering in the last uh, during the last week and also this week uh, those things uh, how those got developed by one after another big physicist that uh, we have to some extent in a very brief way we have discussed. Then uh, we have come across the various types of external loads encountered by an aircraft and then we have come across uh, to the conceptual uh, structural details uh, how it is fabricated why thin structure uh, where how is it done why asymmetric structures come uh, all those things are discussed and then uh, we have discussed about the loads uh, load factors uh, flight envelope those points we have discussed we have come across uh, to a good method of unit load consideration for analyzing uh, 
structure whole structure uh, in the sense we have we have divided the whole structure in wing as well as in fuselage and then wing and fuselage uh, is separately uh, analyzed uh, for bending moment and shear force force uh, uh, distribution we have drawn those shear force and uh, bending moment distribution considering a typical case then we have come across with to the um, cases of uh, space structures solid uh, we have solved uh, landing gear problems then in last week uh, we got introduced to the theory of elasticity definition of uh, stress uh, and uh, in the last lecture to definition of strain uh, it is not that theory of elasticity has not been introduced to you earlier but uh, this uh, uh, portion of the course what we are trying is to cover uh, the theory of elasticity uh, from three dimensional point of view or um, from the visible possible uh, orientation or dimensions of any structures and its loading and the stresses what it encounters. So, in that sequel uh, we have uh, defined stress we have uh, come across with equilibrium equation, equilibrium equations with respect to the body force uh, with respect to the surface forces. Then we got introduced with the stress transformation, how stress is transformed uh, along with a little bit of a coordinate transformation. So, uh, and then we found that there is a plane uh, on which uh, no shear stress act. Uh, and uh, not only one plane, there are two more orthogonal planes to the parent planes. So, there are three planes uh, where only normal stresses act and no shear stresses act on that those planes and those uh, stresses are uh, defined as the principal stresses along with that we also found the shear stresses, maximum shear stresses we found and then got introduced to the strain in last lecture and uh, today we will go further with uh, the definition of strain. Uh, what we need to do is uh, today's main topic of discussion will cover the compatibility equation. Compatibility equation is really really very very interesting one uh, we will we'll, uh, have uh, many things written. Uh, with help of those written scripts and uh, other things, we will try to have why compatibility equations are required and what is compatibility we are talking about, what type of compatibility we are talking about that we need to discuss, that we need to see. So, as uh, I was uh, defining, I thought of saying orally, but it is very difficult to say orally the expression of uh, strain with respect to displacement displacement so epsa ij is equals to half of ui comma j uj comma i that is ui with respect to the to the uh, partial derivation to of j and then uj with respect to i where ij is varying for 1 2 and 3 so, that is generally written, but sometimes it is not because our purview of analysis is within that domain only. So, in that sense uh, it may not be mentioned always, uh, we may always consider that i and j is equals to 1, 2 and 3. So, uh, we get 6 components of strain epsilon x x epsilon y y So, all the 6 components we can easily get sometimes to uh, keep a conformity sometimes this is also written as x 
y z with respect to the Cartesian system. So, um, if u uh, i are given as continuous function of x i, we can readily compute epsilon i j. So, uh, that is the reason uh, sometimes x i it is written, sometimes instead of x y z, this is also said as x 1, x 2, x 3, that is the reason it is said x i. So, with res respect to to x i, we can readily compute the epsilon i j, because uh, this we can easily put in this expression and we can find out what is uh, what are the 6 components of strengths, we can easily find it out. On the other hand, if epsilon i j or epsilon i j are uh, given as function of x 1, x 2, x 3, then we cannot uniquely determine u i, because we have 6 equations, 6 equations in epsilon i j, but there are displacement, but 3 displacement components, this 3 displacement components 6 this. So, that is the reason we cannot find it, find it out in unique manner. Uh, so, so we need to need to need to have some relation uh, between between the this this components uh, to satisfy maybe in terms of um, in terms of strains strain components so that uh, it becomes unique. That's the point. Uh, what we say from mathematical point of view, while it got uh, derived, it was it was uh, from mathematical point of view only it got derived. Uh, so uh, that was the first reason uh, to say that it ha should hold some. This is the basic reason to hold some. But later, uh, the physical representation, physical uh, continuity, and those things are talked about later. Let us see the displacement ui must be continuous and single valued, it has to be that is the other requirement uh, to, to keep this reverse uh, relation satisfying. Uh, that single valued unless it is single valued, uh, we may have a strain uh, while derived from the same expression considering some part will give some value or may be some other value considering some other part. So, that may create uh, uh, anomalies, uh, it would not be conforming to the uh, th existing or physical system. So, this has to be continuous and single valued. In order to obtain a unique solution as discussed in 1 and also satisfying the requirement as discussed in 2 you must satisfy certain conditions, those are the compatibility. If so, i j must ensure continuous displacement that is compatibility condition of strain, continuous displacements, continuous for, for how much, uh, that is that's, that's, uh, in which way. Uh, what is happening, you please uh, try to observe, say we better always we consider a simple structures example. Say I have a cantilever beam and it is loaded at tip by P, what will happen? This structure will bend like this. Now, uh, the displacement slope, uh, these parameters uh, are always continuous along this length of the beam, but uh, while we define mathematically uh, that may not be. So, if it is not that will create the problem. So, so these are some, some points what mathematically says that that continuity must hold and that continuity to hold we must satisfy a set of equations 
known as compatibility to keep it unique the solution or relation between x 1, x 2, x 3 and the 6 strain components that is where the compatibility equations come. But in general uh, we do not need those equations to discuss much uh, because uh, the assumption or type of solutions uh, problems we solved uh, those uh, are already solved by many people and uh, these, these things are already satisfied. So, we need not to think much about these things. So, with this idea of uh, equations of compatibility or compatibility condition, let us move forward. All equations, okay. uh, this derivation I would say is available in almost all books it is too mathematical there, uh, here also it is too mathematical, uh, you only need to be an expert of uh, partial derivation and algebraic equation, equation um, what I say observe, uh, observing algebraic equation and uh, rearranging those equations to the desired form or desired expression way. So, in that form uh, we would uh, like to have the establish the relations, why these are the relations uh, that is uh, rarely proved in a book. I uh, will also try to skip those part that part in this uh, context that probably comes in very higher um, mathematics or continuum mechanics, uh, uh, mechanics domain of analysis or in mathematics. So, those things we would not say, but what we would say that uh, the compatibility equations what we see this this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, how, how do we get 1 or 2 we will discuss and uh, we will say that the other may be may be obtained uh, following a similar way. Uh, if you are not able to obtain there are good books available very popular good books or almost all books it is available I would suggest you refer those to, to go into much beyond let us start with the expression of shear strain gamma x y. Uh, gamma x y as usual with respect to that uh, if we if we do half goes uh, with the if you compare with the previous one that is for epsilon we have already established a relation that epsilon is equals to half gamma. So, from there half gets cancelled and we get this expression del v del x plus del u del y. Okay. Now, what we do? We do uh, twice the partial derivative with respect to x and y and the right hand side uh, gets modified this way. This line from mathematical point of view is very, very important since the function u v are continuous we may write, we are changing the derivative sequence of derivation. So, these things usually comes in higher mathematics or you have probably covered in your higher mathematics course. So, okay, what we get is that the, the right hand side gets a little bit modified del 2 del x 2 equals to del v del y plus del 2 del y 2 equal multiplied by del u del x. So, this we can easily say already defined as epsa y y or epsilon y y and this is epsa x x. So, we have a relation between the gamma and 2 epsilon. Okay. So, this is the first compatibility equations. So, following this if we start with this gamma y z easily you can come to this if we if we start with this easily you can come to this it is not a big issue to solve it. Similar way if you start with this expression or epsilon x x is equals to del u del x and then do this to see it is the other two y z if we if we do this derivation and substitute all these x these expressions are the other expressions whatever you have got and rearrange those you will easily get the expressions for this. So, please look at the compatibility conditions, compatibility equations. These three equations uh, establish a relation between the shear and the normal. 
shear strain and the normal strain. And this set of equations on the left hand side with the normal strain to the shear strain. Okay. So, once these equations are satisfied we have unique solution for the strain with the assumption of displacement function. That is the reason it is important and we need to satisfy this condition whenever we are solving any problem following elasticity approach. Not only in elasticity approach uh, say when we go for the uh, process of solution of uh, numerical methods do not think there it is not satisfied. Numerical methods are fundamentally rooted to this uh, theory of elasticity and there whatever the displacement functions are chosen those uh, uh, satisfy this condition and from there the derivation is uh, done. And those are approximate because uh, it is considered piecewise uh, satisfaction of these equations and that is the reason uh, as a whole while we go it gives us approximate solution. Okay. So, we come to a specific case uh, known as plane strain condition, plane stress you are already introduced. It is similar to plane stress in that case uh, say z components of sigma, uh, sigma was 0, here uh, z component of epsa are 0 that is what we mathematically say. It is easy to remember that way that is why we say it frequently, uh, but problem wise it is a, a different type of problem in case of uh, in case of plane stress problem we say that the, the surfaces which are free uh, those are the z direction and in case of, uh, of, of plane strain where the surfaces we are confined or restricted to expand or contract uh, those surfaces or that direction is considered epsa z z. So, with that uh, we, we let us see how the equations are modified. Equations modifications are not much to do only these, these things uh, we are supposed to substitute, we are supposed to substitute in the previous relations whatever we have got for the strain displacement relation as well as the compatibility condition and we get these values. So, uh, uh, particles of the body suffer displacement in one plane only. Let the plane be x y, we say that it is a plane strain problem. The other way I said I told you that in the jet dimension uh, it is restricted or restrained to strain. So, no expansion or contraction is allowed in that direction. So, accordingly the compatibility equations we get. Now, this is a good discussion whether we have uh, got many equations uh, is not it. Uh, I have tried to give you small uh, less number of equations, but uh, uh, up to some limit I cannot restrict myself I have to give. So, anyway let us see what we have and what we need more. So, the stress strain relationship if we talk about why do we need the stress strain relationship that is what is briefed here in these uh, things. Till now we get equations of equilibrium 3, strain displacement relations 6 equations, uh, compatibility equations are an expression of compatibility of displacement which we must have or maintain. So, those are not uh, something um, relating rela in relation to the unknown and the known things and number of equations. So, that cannot be used that is what uh, we said. 
So, similarly if we consider that so total we have 3 plus 6 independent equations. So, number of unknowns what we, we have described using those equations are 6 components of stresses, 6 components of strain and displacement 3 components. So, there is a shortcom. So, uh, 6 more relations we need that 6 more relations will come from the stress strain relationship. So, we must have an additional 6 equation to obtain a complete elasticity solution this we get from the stress strain relations. So, we, we move forward to uh, stress strain relation that is a very easy stuff I would not spend much time on that. But before we go for uh, before we go for the stress strain relation it is uh, time to have some definitions probably you are aware of this definition for better uh, to, to remind those. So, anybody under consideration will be will be assumed to occupy all the space within the boundary surface such idealization of matter is called the continuous media or continuum. Uh, this may be visualized uh, something like that say, um, say uh, uh, I visualize this way say you have uh, a bubble inside a rubber or eraser what you usually use and if you stretch it many times you see that while it is in normal condition you do not see that uh, bubble, but while you stretch it you observe that bubble that makes it uh, not a continuous media. So, something like that if it is there, uh, there are discontinuities. Uh, so, this continuous assumption is not holding. Elastic body, it is a if a strained body can recover completely to its original state or shape the body is called an elastic body. Please note its original state or shape. If a strained body cannot recover completely to its state or shape the body is said to be plastic state. So, that is the basic definition. Uh, so, this may relations we will talk about in next slide. Homogeneous body, if a body possesses the same property everywhere in the body uh, that is a homogeneous body that means any sample we take that shows the same property that is why we say it homogeneous. And isotropic, isotropic is the properties in all directions are the same at a point. All directions we have, uh, we have talked about only three directions. So, in the all the three possible directions or maybe in a if you rotate uh, whatever the way you like the axis system in any direction the properties are same. So, we call that as isotropic is if not we call it an isotropic orthotropic there are many others uh, categories we will not discuss those things those are generally discussed in other subjects in more detail. In general we shall consider bodies to be elastic, homogeneous and isotropic continua. That is what uh, we our all elasticity problems what we are discussing is based on. So, on these uh, definitions uh, we will define the stress strain relation. So, the stress strain relation we come across is this is, is what is new in this right. Why uh, did I discuss the previous slide? The previous slide is the basis, previous definitions are the basis of these assumptions or say I should say it is not assumption uh, this property. Hooke's law epsi x x is equals to sigma x s divided by E, very well known E is modulus of elasticity. See here one more thing you must note in the previous one we talked about elast 
stick that means uh, which recovers but it may recover uh, in a linear manner or in a non-linear manner. So, so, whether E is constant during the process or not that is a big concern. Our discussion is again within the limit where we have E is a straight line that this is sigma, this is epsilon and the slope is E. So, our per view or discussion is in that region. So, epsi x x accompanied by uh, lateral strain epsi y y equals to minus nu sigma x by epsilon. This is uh, easy to write sometimes uh, I, I visualize in the way that uh, it is very easy if we if e, I used to play in my still I play. Uh, with with eraser, eraser is a very soft piece of rubber. Many things are easy to visualize there. So you can easily observe that if you pull the pull the eraser or the rubber block, uh, it contracts from the transverse two directions. Uh, why it contracts? That is because of the Poisson's ratio and that is the reason the minus is there. That ratio of contraction is given by this Poisson's ratio. These are already introduced to you. So, better not to spend much time, but I, I like to bring that example that is why I am talking about that. So, with this thing with this scenario we can easily write these equations because if a body is under stress of sigma x, sigma y and sigma z or sigma x x sigma y y or sig and sigma z z we can easily say that 1 by e multiplied by sigma x minus mu into sigma y y plus sigma z z. And similar way we can write the other two normal strain components and the shear strain components we can easily write considering g as the modulus of rigidity as gamma x y is equals to tau x y by g and so on. Okay. These you are these are easy equation probably in mechanics many times people introduce this uh, without giving the background and other things I, I think no harm in that. So, we are repeating the same equation. We have come across to some relation in the previous slide E and G relations are written I did not say it uh, very clearly this relation uh, you can you can easily as I said uh, I have skipped that part you can easily prove that following some some two dimensional case of strain uh, where a block uh, is tilted because of shear strain and then put those values and easily you can find it out. So, I do not want to spend much time G is equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu. Uh, so, one more constant is there that we can easily discuss in relation to that and with that we will conclude uh, today's uh, lecture. So, uh, what we can do if we sum all the components of normal stresses uh, we get the equations as we see here and if we if we take it out uh, this uh, portion uh, sigma x x sigma y and sigma z uh, then we can have an expression something like that e. E will define what is E, E is equals to 1 minus 2 nu by E and in a particular case if we consider that all these components are equal and that is minus p or it is a compression from all side or it is a hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is easy to visualize again uh, while we keep something under water. So, from all the surfaces the body if it is considerably small in size with respect to the depth of the water it experiences uh, hydrostatic pressure or equal pressure from all the sides or you may need to do something else to visualize and we can have those type of environment for experiments. But anyway if we put those we get the relation something like this. And this constant uh, in relation to E is known as the bulk modulus or modulus of volume expansion. So, with this small definition we would like to conclude uh, the lecture with, with, uh, 
with compatibility and uh, the standard references come and whatever we have learned that is what is iter reiterated here. Please uh, keep a note of that and then with that uh, I thank you for attending today's lecture. We will meet again with some more concept of problem solving. Thank you.